Why, hello everybody, it is Robbie from Southern California and it's April 1st. And wait, I cleared out the entire driveway? There's no more garden? It's just too much work. I don't need all these different gardens around here. Look how empty it is. Well, April Fools! No, that's what it looked like before we had a garden here. Of course I'm not clearing out. I will say, sometimes I go a bit nutty trying to get everything done because I have multiple gardens, but you know what? It really doesn't take as long as you think. Let's walk through the garden here, and this one is the driveway garden. As you can see, I have done really nothing. Everything you see is actually plants that were planted last year. The tree colored I did move here in the nice purple bucket. I've got my eggplant from last year that has suddenly taken off. Isn't that wonderful? It's got a great root system in the tote. I don't even have to do anything. I did add in a mustard and look, look. I actually have a steak. I love my plant steaks I make from the tote lids. I now know right away, don't even have to think, I've got purple mustard there. Pepper last year, that may come back. Not sure on this black cobra. This was the smallest, tiniest plant, but it looks like it's making a new comeback from the bottom. So I may end up trimming out the top. This is the one that didn't do that great compared to the others. There were three in the container I bought from the 99 cent store. It was, you know, three plants in one container. Separated them, gave one to my daughter, and then we kept this one. This is the one that's produced all winter long. It's still producing. It's still throwing flowers. It's still giving us peppers. We've had peppers constantly. Then of course I've got another tree colored, walking onions. This is lettuce in buckets. It's been fantastic. Got a little warm so it may bolt on me. I have new lettuce ideas I'm trying. And then look at this. Beautiful. We have been getting more lettuce this year than ever before. I come out here, big bowl, a salad I can make out of the lettuce. Peppers, those are the purple beauties. And keep in mind, even though they're purple, they're really not ripe until they're red. But isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to go through and freshen up a lot of these totes. So let's just keep walking. I'm going to probably maybe just take either some fresh potting soil that I buy, I'm not sure yet, or I might just take from another tote that I'm starting to throw things in and then just top it, put some soil on top and keep going. We'll see. I haven't done anything here on the wall. The wall here on the driveway is everything you see is pretty much from last year. Everything. Because I haven't gotten to it. I'm still working on my rainbow garden. So I'm just leaving it and maintaining it. A lot of these tomatoes will go and I'll put fresh tomato plants in. I do have time. My only time. I actually had just planted some more. That's a little thyme plant there. I keep it a, a ring around it so nothing bothers it. That's my only time. Got a few carrots left. And these are, I think these are carrot wood trees coming up from seed. Because we have carrot wood trees. See? Look. See where that's coming from? Mama tree is throwing seeds into the best thing she can find, my tote, and she is growing a whole bunch of trees that we don't want. Okay, so I've got an eggplant there, and this I'm all gonna clean out. I think there's some turmeric in here. I had a piece of turmeric. I already pulled some of it out. Oh yeah, see the leaves? Can't get to it, but it's back there. And I pushed it in there last year because I thought it was a dried out piece, that it was no good. It was good, and it grew turmeric. So I still have some turmeric in there. This is the three containers. Oh, don't quote me. I think I set them up in December. I think it was December. And these are the cabbages. We have been getting cabbage. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And a tomato plant came up. I didn't plant this tomato plant. I actually looked at it yesterday and thought, you know what? I'm going to stake the tomato plant up. I'm going to get the rest of the cabbages out and gonna freshen it up, get the potatoes out. This is potatoes and of course lettuce. Isn't that beautiful? Get the lettuce out, harvest some of the potatoes by just reaching in and taking them out and leave that tomato. It came up on its own and it's doing fabulous. And here's more cabbages. I love growing cabbages. I just made sauerkraut. And I've cut, see the cabbages I've cut out? Now yes, if I leave them, they'll try to grow little cabbages around, but I don't know if I'm gonna leave them yet. No hurry. The south thistle, you know, we leave that for the goldfinches so they have food. They use the seeds to eat as far as food, but the hummingbirds, they've been collecting it because they line their nests with it. I mean, look at this. 
you think they're dumb? They're really smart. This is soft. This is like the softest wool you can get. Look at that. So they come through here and they get a mouthful. I watch them all the time in the morning when I come out here to have coffee now. And I just watch them come down and pick the fuzz and they take off and they'll do this over and over and over because they're lining their nest for their babies to have that beautiful soft fuzz in their nest. And more cabbages here. And again, this is potatoes dying back. So I know I've got more potatoes. I will get in there. And then I'll figure out from there where I you know, want to go. I'm not sure yet. So now I'm done with here. Isn't that funny that I'm growing carrot wood trees in a tote? Perfect environment. You can start cuttings in a tote while you're growing other plants. Okay, that's another video. We won't go there. All right, let's go do the front yard. And see, little by little, the buckets are disappearing. Okay, now we're in the front yard. And you know what? Things are going good in the front yard. My totes are almost ready. Look at that. Almost ready. See the kitchen scraps? There's the eggs. It's just stuff from there. There's some rotten food from in there. I even had a gallon of milk that went bad. I'm going to just take the gallon of milk and just pour it into all four totes. Because in here, I'm going to do zucchini and maybe tomatoes. This is almost ready to go. I just have to top it with something. I've been... Checking my seeds and the seedlings I'm growing and the zucchini isn't really growing as vigorous. The tomatoes are really doing far better. So I'm still waiting. I actually checked and found last year. There was a lot of zucchini. I didn't even plant until July. So we're getting ready and we are starting some seedlings in the house in different ways in paper cups. You know, you've seen me do that. I've got the plastic bag method going, which has been fantastic. And that's how I know the seeds aren't sprouting as fast because it's not the right time. Plus I've tested some seeds by pushing some hybrid zucchinis into soil. And they're not quite growing that good. So I am waiting, but here I'm going to work on all this. So this will be well, I don't know. I haven't gotten to it yet. Probably squash. The zucchini does great here all summer. They get a little bit of shade from the trees and the environment seems perfect. This, the zu zucchinis I grow here look like torpedoes. So I'm going to get zucchini in here as I'm finished with it. Slowly just building up the soil. A lot of it is from last year. Going to add to it more leaf matter. I just have to go around the garden, collect a lot of leaves, dump in a bucket of kitchen scraps after I'm done, you know, in a day or two, throw everything in there and then just go for it. Kind of like a lasagna way. You want to layer. You don't want to mix up too much because your soil is alive. You think of that. Your microbes and everything are in there. Your earthworms, they've got their home in there. You dig it up, you've disrupted their home and then they got to start over. So you don't want to upset them too much. So I'll be kind of layering. Now any of these, well all of these are draining really good. But if any of these were not draining, I would then take the soil out put a whole bunch of twigs and leaves and stuff on the bottom paper and then put it back and start over. It's not that hard to do. So that's it. I'm still trying to get rid of all the containers from moving the pools out last year and moving things around because he's building something there, Gary. And the table here, these are last year's onions. See, look, they're going to have flowers. I want to see what happens with some of these because they threw the baby white onions on the top, which I'm growing with the cabbage. So I want to see if they're going to have seeds or with babies or just seeds. And there's my walking onions. Look at this. They're starting to walk. They walk here about twice a year. They'll walk now in spring and then they'll walk again. In other words, they're developing new babies. They don't develop seeds. They are pushing their babies up and they do it twice. So they do it in the spring and then they do it again in the fall. And then here is the broccoli. I should grab some broccoli. Maybe I'll end the garden tour on the deck and go give Kitty some broccoli. See, here's the broccoli. I know, I'm doing it wrong. I have to trim this all down so I'll get more broccoli and I leave a lot of this this time of the year for the bees. And that's it, I've got celery down there. Oh, that's kind of it. And then a colored, a tree colored cutting I put in here. All right, let's keep walking. And isn't that pretty? These are geraniums. I'm actually doing a lot of geranium cuttings just for color, you know, and to give places for animals to hide in, in pots. I've been doing cuttings. It's the easiest thing to do. Look at this. This is the tool I put up from last year. It's over, I think it's over a year old now. There's not a hole in it. It's doing fantastic. I've got the rocks holding it down because it was so windy yesterday and today. And see the rocks don't let it lift up. Just 
clothespinning a little pile of rocks on the bottom. Yeah. And now I've got walking onions all through here. Isn't that cool? Nothing bothers it because the squirrels start chewing on it. And it's just draped over the stakes and this looks like it'll last a good another year. Here's where Gary's building something. That's why we had to move the totes out and he emptied the totes and he put them in um, pots and well, I don't know. So he's doing his project and it didn't matter because I was changing the front yard and I don't know if I'll put totes here or not. I don't know what I'll do. We'll see what happens when he builds it. Okay, let's swing around. Okay, I'm starting here. I haven't gotten to these. These are all ginger. And then of course, here I've got turmeric, the regular orange, yellow turmeric, and ginger, and of course, stevia. Now I did get to my black turmeric and I just planted it. So I've got two in here and the other ones have three each because I ended up with eight crowns and then they've got the fingers that were attached to it. I didn't break any of those apart. So we'll see what happens. But instead of having them all in one, last year I put everything back in one pot. I now have three pots and I went with the deep blue. So I will know right away when I see blue, I will know instantly that's got turmeric and I'm probably gonna do the ginger in yellow or orange. I'm not sure. I'll see when I get here and maybe the turmeric as well because now I don't know what's turmeric and I don't know what's ginger. Look at the stevia. Here's the original stevia from what three years ago? Could be four. I'm losing track of time. It's coming up from the roots and look at this. This is the original pot. Now the pot, let's see if you can see. No, it's not split. They set their roots into this pot and I never did anything with it except separate some off. I only bought one pot of stevia. But the thing was, there was a whole bunch of plants in there. So I grabbed some and I put some in there and then I put some in here. And yes, this one's bigger because it's straight in there. But that's okay, I'm leaving it because I think there's some turmeric or ginger in here too. And that's the original plant. So I only bought one and I tasted it in the store and it was really sweet. So I went with that plant. So every year that plant comes back. So I've got one here. I've got one there, I've got one there, and I think I've got one on another chair, and I've got some on my deck, and that's worked real good. And then here, well, I do have to get in there. If I don't, within the next month or so, they're gonna start growing, and they might be too tight. They'll grow fine. The ginger will just keep going, but the problem is I won't get the production that I could get, and I wanna get a whole lot more. See, now here we know we've got ginger. They're so big and it's so packed in here that they're pushing themselves to the surface. And I think there's more. Yep. I didn't even know. There's more here. So I'll have to get through this. I don't think you want to watch me really go through all these pots of ginger. But I'll dump them out like I did the black turmeric. And then I'll see what I've got. I'm going to freeze some. I'm going to keep some fresh for us to eat. And then I'm going to replant some. And if I get enough next year, I'm going to start drying it and making my own powder. We'll see. Right now, I don't need to. We've been using it fresh and freezing it. Okay, let's go into the main yard. So now we're into the main garden. I called the main garden because this is where it all started. For me, this was the first garden I started to set up. Originally, the plans were to lay all these bricks and just have a simple little herb garden and nothing else because I couldn't grow anything in this soil. And to buy soil for us was simply too expensive. But as we figured out that Gary got his wood chips and he could build his own soil, and I figured out I can start collecting leaves and make my own soil, it made life easier and more affordable for us. And I think the plants did better too. So now we've got the garden that I believe I'm gonna call the bird garden. I'm pretty much transferring the name from the main garden to the bird garden because, well, let's just say, this whole garden belongs to the birds. Look what they're doing to my plants. No, that is not insects. They sit there and they just eat the greens. I mean, why not? They've got all the water they want. They've got all the food they want. They're just hanging out. We'll get more into the birds as we, as we get closer to the feeders. But let's see, my containers are going really good. I'm still getting ready to set up more in here. Right now, these are older walking onions. There's a little bit of red vein sorrel in there. This is a dinosaur kale. This is one of the cuttings off the original plants that were planted about six years ago. That's just the skeleton of the last plant. And I left it, even though this plant is gone, this dinosaur kale here is gone. The birds land on it and hide here, so I leave it. And then here I've got a tree collard, just the cutting. I've got another type of, another tree collard, I guess, or that might be collard there because it's lost most of its leaves. The birds have been chewing on it. 
and then a broccoli and a more broccoli that's got to be trimmed back so I can get the broccoli corrected correctly. I haven't done that and I will do it. Then of course that's the purple tree color that is just too leggy but you know I'm leaving it right now until I get to it. All these, every single stick here you see, all of them could be a separate plant. I just don't have a place for it right now. So I'm leaving it just the way it is. Got it kind of staked up if you want to call it that. And then I will start doing cuttings later on. Lemon verbena, it died back at the end of winter and it's just starting to make a comeback now. See the pretty green leaves coming in? They're just starting. See what the birds do? Such damage. That's okay. I come through here now because I'm building up all these gardens and all this is soil to me. So if they damaged it really, really, really bad, I removed the leaves. And if I really wanted it, I would just simply cover it with tulle and that would stop the damage. There's some more red vein sorrow down there. Let's swing over here for a minute. I'm estimating these totes are close to six years old. They're still going good. We're not bought new, bought at the thrift store. These are bigger. These are not quite 18 gallons. Let me see if I can see what they are. It still has the original tag. Mm. Oh, these are sterilite. See, I didn't know they were sterilite. 30 gallon. I didn't know. Can you imagine that tag's been out here all those years? So I've got garlic chives growing in here, celery. I've got here a dazzling blue kale. I've got to clean all this up. Same thing here, got to get all that out. So that's growing and then this is a lemon verbena. It was in a pot, of course it's left the pots growing in the tote. This is a dinosaur kale. See as you get closer to the house, this is a stick here holding it up. Their birds aren't bothering it. They're really bothering the ones that are closer to the garden part where they want to hang out. This is too much in the open, so they don't bother it as much. Keep that in mind. Whoa, we almost got hit by a bird. Celery, and then my mushroom plant has died back, which it does do that. And as we get deeper in the spring, it will make a full comeback. And I want to get more cuttings off of that. There's some mint back there. And again, oh, I think that's a dazzling blue kale. I should get that in its own pot and do something with that. Let's keep walking through. Now, as far as what I've done here, nothing. Actually, you'll say it looks neater. Well, it doesn't look good, but it looks neat. Yes, I'm clearing out a lot of stuff little by little. This is not where I'm really working right now, but I am kind of clearing out like, okay, I don't need that pot there. I don't need things sitting around I don't want. So I'm clearing it out and I'm moving things or setting it aside for later. I'm gonna clear all this out and set it up differently. And this is for the birds. They've got all their water features I put in. These are all solar. There's only two here that are electric. Been feeding them all day. We've brought in over 50 species of small birds that feed here now. So that's why I'm calling it the bird garden. And I really don't wanna to cover too much. Now, after saying that, I did cover this. This is my lettuce, three little two gallon buckets of lettuce and garlic. See, this is garlic. Now let me tell you something, plants don't like to be touched. So I really need to put a stake up and I need to drape the tool over it, not lay on the plants. Plants don't, re I can tell by the way they react, they would prefer not to be touched. So when you drape things, it's better to actually drape it with stakes so the plant feels more free and not confined. But all in all, it's still working. The lettuce is beautiful. The birds got in here. Well, why not? It was going good. They're eating their seeds. Then they looked over and thought, oh, fresh salad. And they came in here and in matter of hours, I walked through here, they had eaten so much of this down. So what I did was, because some of this is gonna belong to me, I just draped tool over there. Well, like weeks ago and it all grew right back. Tool works perfect. They can't get to it. They're not gonna bother with it. And I am now growing all this lettuce in there and garlic perfectly in my bird garden with the birds. And that's what I said. I can pick and choose certain things I don't want them to touch. All this I'm going to change to as I get into the garden. A lot of geraniums back there. Just things that I really want to clean up. That's mint. That is spearmint all over the bottom. And Gary likes that as tea in the summer. Actually, I should make some soon. That has been one of my favorite little solar fountains there. Do you see that? That is nothing more than a solar fountain put in a bowl with some rocks. I put a stick there in case they wanted to land on it and sometimes they do. They love that fountain. And then the panel is right here. And that's how simple it is. You don't have to do anything. There's nothing to do. Just drop it in a bowl. 
You don't need a sprayer because if you put the sprayer on, you'll be emptying that bowl out every, what, 20 minutes and just leaving it like that. Here too, again, I haven't gotten in here. So everything you see is last year's plants. There is nothing planted new. Got this tote here. I'm going to freshen that up. That one too, that's an old one. See the crack? That's my fault. I let something grow, lean over, and it cracked it. But you know, that's got another one or two years to go. And maybe I'll put a pot or something in the front, or even if I wanted to, which I don't think I want to do the work. I could empty that, flip it around, put the crack on that side, and you wouldn't see it. And on top of that, it would hold it. But I don't know if I want to go to all that work. It's not that important to me. Then I've got my lemon balm up here. Bought that at the grocery store, and that needs to be pulled out. It's in this little upside down planter. Again, I don't recommend these. Look how shallow they are. I got them for like, yeah, I think I got them for $2.50. That's the only reason they're all over. They were at Walmart quite a few years ago. I think like five, six years ago, my daughter called me, get down here, they just reduced them. And they had them all marked for five, and I think they were half price. So we took them all, gave some to my daughter, some to a friend, and guess what? They gave them back. They didn't want them. Isn't that funny? So I ended up with them, and so I do something with them. But I'm going to split the lemon balm and get more planters. I think I'm going to put some lemon balm up there so it'll be kind of like on both sides and redo all this. This has got some sweet potato, and I haven't even looked. There's probably sweet potato in there, and the rest is all walking onions. See, they're walking. They're just starting. I think I noticed this the other day. Just starting. And what happens, let's see if I've got something up here. I don't have anything. All right. They're going to go up. The babies develop. I do have to stand up so you can see what I'm talking about. I don't have a tall one. But they, the babies develop on the bottom, and then they move. As the leaf grows, they move and move and move. And then the leaf will get taller. And then on the top, it will open up and burst open. And there could be two or three, or there could be... 10 little babies on the top and then you can leave them and once they get big enough you just snap them off and you do what I did back here just stick them in a pot and they will grow that's why I have so many as I walk through the garden and I find them I just pick them up and stick them somewhere oh this is mint it's trying to make a comeback right now because it goes dormant pretty much in the winter we've had a semi mild winter even though we had cold days so a lot of it didn't die back completely this is sage. Isn't that gorgeous? I don't want to touch it if there's bee on it. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful, that flower. So that's sage, and then I've got celery everywhere. It grows like a weed. Absolutely grows like a weed. See all these fountains here? These are all solar. They're old and they're solar. Somebody threw that one away because the pump broke. Well, that was an easy fix. Pull the pump out and put a solar one in there. And now, I've got a solar fountain that somebody threw out in the trash we picked up. I could fix it up and make it fancier, and I probably will as the time goes on. This is that hybrid, and this is fantastic. It's a hybrid cross. Ooh, look at all the leaves. I need that. Boy, am I filling totes. I'm going to have to come back through here and clean that off. Um, it's a cross, I think. It may have dazzling blue kale in it, but it's got collard, and it's a, some sort of cross, so it's kind of growing on its own thing. It came up from seed and so it's not you know directly a certain species of whatever it's a cross see that's that is actually collard that's not tree collard that's collard so I think it's got a cross with collard and some sort of kale and then there's my tree collard I'll step back here so you can see what's going on I saw this yesterday I have an issue see this tree collard fell so this one's going to end up at some point going out that's garlic chives. And it kind of grew that way. So the original point is down there, but all these, you really can't see it. All these are coming up from the trunk, see? There you go. See the trunk? So the trunk has got all these growths coming up, and this fell over yesterday, it got too heavy. So I'm gonna have to think of how I wanna do this, if I wanna chop them up and replant them or just let them do its thing and then take off smaller cuttings and start with smaller cuttings. This is dazzling blue kale. Isn't that beautiful? Dazzling blue kale is absolutely gorgeous. I think it's just beautiful. That, and I should do cuttings off of that because I don't know if the seeds would grow true on that or not. And then here I've got tomatoes just coming up from seed. I don't know, these eggplant look really sad. So I'll leave them for now and then when I get to this garden, I will actually decide, oh, look at this. 
we were like, what were we yesterday? In the upper 80s and now the sky just got dark. Isn't that something? So I thought, why the solar fountains just stopped? We are really dark. We're, not, we're supposed to have a warm sunny day today and it's really cloudy. Here are some purple tree colors. I love purple tree colors. Aren't they gorgeous? And you can do so many cuttings off of them. There's another one. That one is going all over the place. I may have to restake that. Here's a lemon vermina. I sucked that in the ground and that one's directly in the ground. So that's really good. Well, so is this purple tree colored and that one's straight in the ground. So I've got it mixed up. Now this one's in a pot and this one is doing beautiful. And I did have to stake it up. You can see there's wire on the fence. Look at this. Just so you know, this is green masking tape. Oh, wait a minute, that's not green. That's green masking tape. I put this branch here so the birds can come and land on the rebar that's coming out of the brick. And I painted it brown. I think I painted it brown close to six months ago. It's still brown. Look at the look at the tree. This is the mandarin tree, or it's tangerine. Look at that. The flower, I can smell it. The smell of a citrus tree in bloom is absolutely amazing. Oh my gosh, I just, if you have a place to put a citrus tree and you can grow citrus trees in your area, it's always nice to have that. I did that out my kitchen window. I put some citrus trees out the kitchen window just so I can smell them when they're in bloom and it's beautiful. All right, that's where the original tree collard was. It was here in this area and it fell over that big one that was used to be like 15 feet tall. And that's a cutting off of it. And then this is one of the branches that went into the ground I don't think it ever set root, but see, it's still green. So I do have some hope. It doesn't matter. If it makes it, it makes it. When we took the tree out, the tree, it was a tree. Boy, that bird is loud. It's a house finch. Um, that's what's singing. When we took it out, that was in there, so I buried it more and I keep it watered. So we'll see. If it doesn't make it, it doesn't make it. It's no big deal. See how I use some of the branches for, tree, for birds? It looks like tree branches, but it's actually an old collard. It works, they come and they land on it. Look at this, seeds flew into this uh, strawberry thing and they're growing in here. Different types of kale and collard grow in there. Isn't that cool? That I think is going. I've got a different system and I don't like that. See, when I grew strawberries in there, it's so hard to get to the back behind the, where the, the fence is, the wire. And then you gotta get back here and keep an eye on strawberries growing. And it's, a, to be honest, it's a pain. And then on top of that, because it's hidden, it's a good place for a rodent to hang out because he thinks he's in well covered. They, remember, rodents and even birds don't like to be too much in the open. And when they have a place that they know that they're camouflaged and hidden, that's when you have bigger problems. So that's gonna go. I like the cement stepping stone Gary put there. So I may use that later for something else, but I am gonna move that. So we're pretty much done in here. Let's see, I don't know, you know what, let's peek, take a peek in here. I don't even know what's in here. I've been in here a couple days ago because I've got some seeds. See, I, this is a new thing. I haven't put the video up yet. It's a new way I start seeds. Not my favorite way, but my lazy way. I haven't looked at this in probably six days and I don't have to water it in the system I've got it set up. And then that's some peppers that came up. These are actually orange bell, mini bells and then this is bok choy, and I believe what's in here is thyme. And I threw that in there, and I forgot about it, and Gary's growing something. So that's all that's going on in here. Nothing else. There's the thing. I'll get that up so you can see how I set these up. He had me make them some the other day, and he said, can you make them for me? Because there's a system that, with the way I have to put it together, and I did, and it's, he's going to finish putting it together the way I do it, and then he doesn't have to bother. That's why he likes it so much because you set up your seeds and you forget about it. It's kind of like set and forget. That's the way it is. You set and forget it. So I don't have to think about it on certain seeds and just set them up and then go back and see what grew. There's a wonderful papaya. I don't know how long this thing will last for. Of course the tote is going to fall apart. I don't even know how many are in there. There's at least 10 plants in there and one tote. I do not recommend this, all right? They're growing. It was, they came up in my compost. There was a, there was originally a pot in there 
and there were, I was composting in there and all these little seedlings came up and in a blink, in a blink, they just took off and started growing. The tallest one that was way up in the air is gone. It kind of it kind of died out on the top, so Gary took it out. So the whole thing is gone. Oh, there it is. See? He took it out. Oh, see how spongy it is? Isn't that cool? So he, he took it out and threw it in there. And we'll see what happens. If it looks like it's going to go, it's going to go. I'm not going to do any cuttings off of this. He's not crazy about the fruit compared to some of the others. So I might as well grow what we like and not what we don't like. So we'll leave this. He eats it. Not that we don't like it. They're smaller. I think they're a strawberry papaya. But he likes the other ones better. He likes to taste. And the Mexican papaya that we're growing, we'll see it when we step out. That one tolerates the cold weather much better. See, as soon as it gets cold, it really gets hit. And it turns yellow, the leaves. The other one doesn't seem to mind the weather as much. So that's why we figured we'll go with that and I might do some cuttings and get cuttings off of that. There's the cocktail grapefruit, I think it is. Look how beautiful it is, full of flowers. It smells so good. Oh, there's one left back there. Okay. My daughter asked me the other day, I see some inside. Nobody wants to climb inside. And she said, oh, you don't have any? Well, she could have climbed in there to look. She stopped over. She brought me some seeds and came to get some seeds. So anyways, here's totes. Same thing like you saw on the other side. I've had these for years and these are standing up beautiful. And all this damage you see, look, this is beautiful, right? This is not. Apparently, the white crowns really like Swiss chard along with lettuce. And what they do is they sit on top of the leaves and they just eat them away. The white crown sparrows that are here right now have come in by the thousands. I don't know if they're in the feeder right now. Actually, they're not. It's very quiet right now. It's kind of odd, kind of an odd quiet. Maybe it's like the storm is coming in. It kind of got really quiet. Notice? But anyways, as I was saying, the white crown sparrows, they come in here now by the thousands and they are like oh, eating machines. They eat seeds and greens. They're not going to stay here. All of a sudden, one day, and I don't think it's today. Nope, they're there. They will just be gone. It's so weird. I'll come out here, sit by the feeder. The day before, there were thousands all over the place, and then all of a sudden, they're gone. They go up north. Let's keep going. They go up north, and they just disappear. They go to a nest. They don't nest here. So whatever seeds, plants that they need for their babies, that's what they do. They wait, and they know the right time. And when the right time comes, they take off, they go up north, they have their babies, and then they come back here for the winter and, and gorge on everything that we put out for them and whatever's in the garden. This is the Mexican papaya that Gary likes. And this is the one I'm gonna do cuttings on. Look how big it is. The weather doesn't knock it around or anything. I mean, there's like dozens and dozens and dozens of fruit everywhere on here. Look at that. So I did a cutting, but I think it might be too small. So I'll have to figure out another cutting. See, here's another one I could do, but oh, yo, yo, got you in there. There's, there's so many I could do a cutting from. So I will decide at some point if, when I'm gonna try another one, or I might just grow it from seed, but knowing how good this plant is, really would want a cutting. So that's the papayas, and then of course, you know the story on them, each one, was growing actually in a container in my garden. They were not planted this way on purpose. And I used to compost them. I don't used to. I still, I was composting a place then. This is, these are only three and four years old, if that. And they were coming up in the floral pots and then Gary said, well, just compost them in. And I didn't have the heart, so I started dragging the pots out. And then they were growing and growing, but we weren't getting any fruit. And then I figured out they need a lot of plant food from them, think of it so big they fall they rot feeds the plant so I put a tote by each one and that changed everything and that's how we ended up with all the fruit then we've got the pomegranates in the back coming back see spring is here they got all green and that's basically it elephant food and then we've got the rosemary that's flowering beautiful purple flowers that the bees absolutely love and that's it I am now growing strawberries you saw me set this up this has been fantastic they were nothing, what, two, less than two weeks ago? And they are taking off. I think I even saw some flowers somewhere. Yeah, look at this. This is the best setup. This is why I said I can move this, turn it. It's draining in there. I'm going to get some 
leaves and branches and stuff and get p stuff planted in there. This is the rainbow garden. This is my happy place. The whole place is my happy place, but this is my special place. See, my solar fountain's not working because it's so cloudy. It got really dark all of a sudden. Can you imagine? 20 minutes ago, it was like so sunny half hour ago, and now it's just so dark. I'm almost done with the chairs. This one's set up. This one might be set up. If the tomato plant I moved it doesn't take, I'll put something else in there. Broccoli. Broccoli. There's the cutting. Here is, um, this is just the start of zucchini. Everything is well labeled. I threw some beets in here. So we'll see. Oh yeah, the beets are starting. So the beets are coming up. And then I've got another bucket. This is just for layering. So I can move this out at any time I want. Let me put that back. Sorry about that. And then I've got more broccoli. Again, I moved that here. This is an elephant garlic. Isn't that nice? I don't have to think about it. Everything is labeled. That's doing it. Here's the sugar cane. I haven't looked. Let me see. Let's see what's going on. You want to look with me? I don't know if it rotted. No, I still see it. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. I'm going to have sugar cane growing in a top. Do you see that? There it is. It is starting to grow. Isn't that, see the black sugar cane? Isn't that cool? There it is. I didn't know that. Look at that. I hope you can see that. Oh, wow. Okay, so that's one sugar cane. That is really cool. Then we got lettuce. And this is a baby black cobra that came up under the parent plant, the big one, and I rescued it. No, I didn't rescue it. I moved it because it's going to have its own home. I have not planted anything in this yet. Now I got black hands. And then I've got my mustard, my purple mustard. This is all onions I bought from a guy in Texas. And oh, there's my like, I think it's like a bok choy. It's a Chinese cabbage. Look at that. I started these inside in the plastic bag method. And I took, and then I put them in the new method afterwards, and then I moved them, and I didn't know if they would grow. I left them in there too long. I put them in a container, and they got kind of leggy. If they don't make it, I'm just going to plant more, but they're doing really good today. Let's see, in here, this isn't really set up yet. See how I put my gloves out here for an emergency? I made a hole, and then I put a clothespin that's got a hole with some wire. And then I, if I need gloves, so I didn't, I mean, my hand's black now. I could have grabbed just a pair of gloves, did my thing, and hang it back. And then here, I've got mustard. And this is asparagus. We'll see how this goes. i got to trim this back. I don't need this. But hopefully, I'm, I can grow asparagus in here. I don't see why not. See a little asparagus? So we'll see. This is oregano. I'm going to move the oregano somewhere. And then I've got a broccoli back here. I love having labels. I did not use the good Sharpie on that. And then here I've got a romaine lettuce that grows beautiful here. Look how gorgeous this is. I'm going to let it get up there, get really big, get its seed head go going. And once the seed head starts to go, I'm going to cover it. I want the seeds from that. And this I haven't done anything with. But see the seeds are growing. All the seeds coming up are tomatoes. So the tomatoes, these are just tomato seeds from the kitchen scraps. See how it grows? And people say, oh, you've got to wait till your compost breaks down. Okay, well, you tell Mother Nature that. Don't argue with me. And look at this. This is all tomatoes. I don't know if I want to really plant those because I want to plant something this year that I know. And then I say that and then I move it. So we'll see because I can't label it. What am I going to put a label in there that says tomato? I don't know. We will see. Oh, I did put something here. This is a cutting. And yet I know because I labeled it red tomato. It has small red tomatoes. This is a cutting though. So if it makes it, it makes it. Cuttings are really good to do, but keep in mind, there's pros and cons on cutting. They have to develop a root system. So they actually sometimes can take longer to grow than starting from seed. Because the first thing a seed does, it creates a root and it creates its root system immediately. When you have a cutting, it has to create a root system. And if it doesn't create a good one, you've lost it. Now you definitely want to do cuttings if you've got something you absolutely love and you don't know if you can grow it from seed again. But you know, just, just keep that in mind. If you think your cutting is just sitting there, it's not doing anything, it has to create a root system first. And that's what slows it down. You're gonna ask what it is, I'm not done. This is another project of mine and it's a hummingbird feeder. We will get into that real soon, as soon as I get that video together. That's it. So it's still coming along. We're almost done with the rainbow garden. Now I'm gonna get my blueberries planted in there. I'm gonna get this wall set up. 
and I'm not sure yet what I'm doing with any of this stuff. Little by little, but quick too. I want to get it done. And then here, I've got a new system I'm going to set up, but I'm not sure where I'm going to set it up. So we'll see. And this, I definitely will take you with me when I do it, because this is going to be very important to me for feeding my plants. And I'll show you how you can set something up, and it's going to be fantastic and stable and everything. Okay, now let's walk over, I guess, to the chair garden. Now we're at the chair garden. This was my favorite garden. I think the rainbow garden will be this. This this was my favorite. I would just sit here and it was just beautiful and the birds would come in. I haven't touched it. It is just as bad as it was what you probably saw two weeks ago. Removed a little bit of lettuce. I've been planting lettuce around, but as you can see, it's being chomped on. Oh, Gary took a whole bunch of lettuce and he moved it, and I think, in his garden. See what's happening? I'll show you more. Actually, this is coming back, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to plant new lettuce. The celery, like I said, it grows like a weed. There's a little bit, a little collard back here or broccoli. Uh, again, not labeled. See, that's the problem. Now, labels are my favorite things, and that's why I love the tote lids. I can cut those things up one, two, three, and have 30, 40, depending on what size, 50 labels and start labeling. Gary's taking handfuls and we're labeling everything. So next time when I come out and plant, I'll be able to tell you exactly what it is and not go, oh, I think it's a collard or is it a broccoli. Celery, there, celery, there's, there's collard or broccoli. I think that's broccoli. All right, so what's going on? There's a pepper back there, nothing. I haven't gotten here yet. I've got parsley still growing. The tomatoes, most of them, as you can see, have died back. So I'm going to compost all this. Just clean it all up. What I do is come through here, cut it up, put it in a bucket, a five gallon bucket, and then I'll get ready to top this. Every, let me step back. Every tote in here, in the way I set it up last year, drains well. See how the front is where it's draining into the pots? And you don't throw this water away. Somebody said, well, what if you get mosquitoes? Dump it under your trees. They will love you for it. Don't worry about it. There's no mosquitoes. If you see larva, dump it. Still takes a few days, so just dump it. But I feed a lot of this back. I usually dilute it with a little water, unless I get lazy, and then I just take something and just water the plants back with it. I'm gonna probably top a lot of this, because years ago, I used to go take native soil. When I first started, and I would put that on the bottom thinking I'd get rid of the native soil, it was cheap. No, what you're developing with that is instead of having cheap soil on the bottom, you're making cement and then you don't have your holes drained. So everything on the bottom now is leaves and branches. And can you imagine a year ago I set this up, they all drain beautiful and you can see, see how the soil sinks down, the plants use a lot of matter and it sinks down. All I have to do is clear some of this out, maybe compost it, or just put a new layer on top. The easiest way you want to do it. And just put some more leaf matter on top, kitchen scraps on top, and then top it with maybe some native soil if you want, or potting soil. And that's it. You're good to go. You start planting. So that's what I'm going to do here. I've got to finish my rainbow garden first, but I'm getting very close to doing in here soon. Watermelon, I want to plant watermelon again in here. It grew wonderful. I had a watermelon in there last year and one in here. So I want to do the same thing, but it's too early because if we get a cool spell come through, then I lose a lot of those plants. So I don't want to do that. So I'm kind of waiting for the right time. But tomatoes, obviously, if I want to do mainly tomatoes, they're coming up on their own, see? It is tomato season. So these are all tomatoes back there. Tomatoes, see this plant? You want to grow a tomato, take your favorite tomato, smash it up, I do it all the time, put it in a pot or in, a, in the soil, it will grow and pick out the ones you want and compost the rest or just leave them. Now here is the white crowns again. I thought it was the deer because I had the video of the deer coming into my garden here and it came, they came through here. They came down the trail and they took their, their drink and they went over there and then they came over here and thought, oh, look, we can have water and come eat wonderful lettuce. So I'm not sure who ate the lettuce first, but I, we have seen the goldfinches come here and the white crown. The goldfinches have a lot of babies right now. This is an easy fix. I've got a better fix. You'll see it as time goes on. I'm going to get it set up and show you exactly how easy it is to grow lettuce. But these wire baskets you can get at a dollar store. They're nothing. They're just wire baskets. They do the trick. So I look how beautiful that lettuce is. 
This one I waited too long, but it's still coming back. See the center, how gorgeous the center is? All you have to do is trim the part that they chewed up and it will come back, see? They're not gonna mess with a lot of that. They're not gonna bother with it. So it's just, the, the, there's so many easy fixes. So it's an easy fix, so when I get serious and I come out here, I'm gonna decide what stays. Yes, I have not done the video on this yet. There's a mad method of how I make these, but you know what, it's okay that I haven't put it together because I did this at the end of summer and look how this has lasted and I've got my own and no, it's not what you see. So I will get into how I make those and that's why they lasted so long. I've got them over there. So I've got to decide, do I want to take everything down? Let's step back. Do I want to take it all down and then re-put everything up? Mm -mm. <laughs> or do I want to come back here and think, gee, I've got a frame already there. I've got a frame already there. Why should I take the frame down? I think I'm going to fix that tomato back there. That one's still alive and bring that back up and work with that. Leave my frames. That's the easiest way to do it. I've done it before. It works. I'm refreshing the soil. It doesn't matter what was in there. It works. And I'll probably will at least this one because the frame is still up and going. I'll probably probably put tomatoes in there and then again maybe a watermelon in there i could move this frame this will pop right up because and i can pop it out one two three because it's just on the two ends and i can move that but the big frame back there i think i'm going to leave it it just would be so much extra work another hour of building a frame and it's already there so i'm going to work what's here and then start figuring out what i want to grow here i'm going to set up a couple of these a little bit different to start lettuce in because lettuce Oh my goodness, you can pull these little things out, pull them out, and they don't even know they got pulled out and moved, and they just grow. Just pull them out, put them in the pot you want, they take off and grow. Easiest plant to move. Then you've got peppers. There's another one. If you got peppers growing, easy plant to move. Their stems on the peppers are so stiff when they're little, you know, babies, you can pull them apart. I pulled peppers apart that their roots were intertwined, the cobras, and they all came apart great. Their root system and their trunk of their plant, even though they're tiny, is really solid and they're easy to take apart. And then you get other things that are not so easy. I, I don't know, you just have to work with different plants. It's hard if you start beans to take them apart. They don't do sometimes good transplanting, so you want to do your beans basically direct. There's a lot of stuff. A lot of your, your root plants, you really want to do a lot of your root plants direct because if you damage the roots and they're in a cluster like that, then you may not end up with what you want. Now that's not to say you can't start the seeds in a plastic bag. I do that all the time with radishes. You start, start them in a plastic bag and then take each individual seed that's starting to grow and pop it in where you want it. And I've had them perfectly spaced radishes and stuff because I put the seed where I wanted it to grow. That's different. Starting your seeds in a plastic bag is far different than trying to take it out of soil where it's not just established the long root, the main center life, that long root, but it's also now started to develop the outside roots and that's what you're breaking when you take it apart out of a pot and you've got them in a cluster or you have multiple plants. You break the outers of the roots and then sometimes they don't make a comeback. Tomatoes are forgiving, but certain plants are not. Celery, I let them self-seed and that's it. Okay, and what else is here? We've got, let's walk over here real quick. He's been transplanting sow thistle. I've got a sow thistle down there. He'll probably transplant it. And he's been putting this here for the goldfinches because they need food. I mean, the hills are kind of bare. And there's not as much food as you think. And there's so many birds. So he transplants some of them. Oh, we don't need this in here. It fell in here. And, oh, do I have a story to tell you? I haven't done it yet. That's actually kind of cool. All right, we'll move that out. Solar fountains are not working because we have no sun. I'm just going to touch on this because there's a whole story behind it. Those are chia seeds. Yep. That's why I got a cage on top so nothing eats them. I want to see what they look like. Those are chia seeds. Oh, you know what? Not only, I'll go ahead and tell you. Not only are they chia seeds, but they've been in my freezer for over two years. This is unbelievable. I just... 
just so funny. I do want to do something on chia seeds. I want to first see what they grow like, and I'll get into that later. But that's the funny part. Gary said, oh, I just heard something about chia seeds. I think you heard it on Nick Federoff's show a couple weeks ago. And he goes, we should get some. I said, I have chia seeds. And he goes, you have chia seeds? I go, yeah, they're in the freezer. They've been in there. I mean, I haven't gone to the grocery store in over a year. And I don't even remember when I bought them. So at least a year, if not two. Oh, I took them out. And he goes, well, maybe we should buy some. And I planted them. And they grew in the freezer for years. And then here's the bathtub. The ho Oh, see, oh, the fish just went by. The hawk has been coming here and taking a bath and drinking. Let's step over here real quick. We'll walk by the truck bed and I'll tell you what's going on. Remember the Cooper Hawk that had babies last year? That's a whole story and one day I'll get the whole thing up. Look at this, last year's squash. I definitely have to go through here. I don't want them all. Need to freshen up, I'm gonna do this differently. Freshen up the, the truck bed really good. Get the rotten squash out because it's gonna grow something I don't want. Get those out and use those. That one's gone, but those are still good. And there's some Malabar spinach in there too. And the tomatillos that grow here, they're, they're gonna reseed and come up on their own. That's what they do. And then I've got the pomegranate. But let's go over the apple trees. Yes, look at that in flower pots. They grew, grew on my deck from seeds, from an apple I had over a year or so ago. And I didn't wanna compost them, so I put them out here. All right, let's walk over here. So what I'm talking about here is last year the Cooper Hawk came and had all those babies and yes siree, she is back on the nest up there and yes, she is sitting on eggs. So apparently this is going to be the perfect spot and if they're like bald eagles, I don't know if they are, they pair for life. Usually birds do pair for life, especially birds like that, unless something happens to a mate. And then if they lose their mate, something happens, then they'll find another mate. But they don't just swap mates unless there's a reason. But they are up there. They came back. They rebuilt the nest. It's already, you know, it was there. But they cleaned it up, fixed it up, rebuilt it, and she is now sitting on eggs on that nest up there. So that is really cool. So we'll have another set of babies and that is just so fun to watch. They come out and they hang around. They watch me, I watch them. And I really do have to put something together on that because I've got them feeding their babies and everything from last year. So we'll see what happens this year. You know what? Let's do a quick stop at the deck. I've had a few people ask. I haven't forgot about it. So let's go take a look at the deck real quick and then we'll end this long garden tour. So here we are on the deck. The deck is still here, and so is Kitty. Look what I brought you. You know, there you go, your broccoli. But I haven't done anything really much to the deck. Okay, let's step over here for a minute. I do have onions I planted. So I'm gonna have a field of onions, and there's a little bit of garlic in there, and there's a broccoli back there. Nothing done here. Here is some more garlic growing. So I've got garlic in here and one elephant garlic back there. How do I know? Because I labeled it. Otherwise, otherwise I'd be saying, I don't know. Everything else, oh, here goes the leaf blowers and everything. Just finished the yard just in time, didn't I? Nothing is done yet. That's why I haven't done anything because I'm working on the rainbow garden. This came up seed in the winter on its own. So I've got purple basil <laughs> that I didn't plant. This is just walking onions and red vein sorrel. This looks really cool. I've got a lot of different things coming up in here. I, like I said, I haven't really planted anything. I will say in here, I did smash a tomato and I've got tons of baby tomato plants. I will decide if I'm gonna keep that. I covered it so no birds would eat the seedlings. And as you can see, nothing still have to plant up all this and move things and here is my lettuce that went to seed and I want to collect the seeds off of this too but I have left it also for the goldfinches and that's why I haven't done the deck because I've been working on everything else so you'll see it coming around you know more and more faster and faster as I get to it this is the stevia I had this oh over a year ago out front in the ginger and turmeric table and I moved it here and it's doing wonderful. We've had stevia up against the wall all winter. It never went dormant. And then this is oregano and this needs to be separated. Look at that, it's just too tight. Like I said, nothing. The chair is still growing. What was in there and there's sage down there. And there's a little bit of dill. 
So that never really did anything, which is good because I can pinch off some dill now because now is the time to get dill growing. And that old celery and the old pepper plant. And Well, what do you think, Kitty? So that's it. So that's why I haven't done much on the deck. This I do want to collect. This is the only onion chives I've got on the property. Used to have a whole bunch and I kind of forgot about it. Well, now I've got seeds starting and I will get a tote probably together just for onion chives, just because even though I love my walking onions, it's to have something different and they're really nice. Parsley, a tomato plant, carrots, and I think I better end this with all the noise going on. The hummingbird feeders are set up. The Orioles are here. They've been getting ready to go to nest, but as you could see, I haven't done anything. The tricolored sage is nice and I separated a piece. So I've got now a cutting I can put in my rainbow garden. So that's really cool. And that's it. So nothing new. This broccoli got chewed up by something, but guess what? It's making a comeback. I may end up moving that somewhere else. It's got kind of a wonky stem. See how the stem is curled? I curled it, I curl, I curled it up with tools so nothing will bother it. But you know, I don't know. We'll see. For now, it's okay. I'll leave it here. And then again, that's the backside of my field of onions. So with that, I think I've covered everything for today. And I am going to go and get Kitty some more broccoli, right? Tell everybody, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody.